Hello guys, welcome to today's lesson. Well, in this video, we'll be covering physics paper one. Uh, we'll be taking some past papers. We're gonna start off with uh, February, March 2014. So now we're gonna do question four from this uh, past paper. And then this question says, the momentum versus time graph of object A, uh, which is originally moving horizontally east in the east direction, is shown below. So this graph here shows the movement for object A. And now, in order for us to solve this problem successfully, we need to, to choose uh, our directions and our signs. So now let's take east, the east direction. Let me just write it here on top. East to be positive. That means worst we will negative. So anything moving to the east direction is positive, and then any movement towards the west direction is going to be taken as negative. So now, uh, the first question says, write down the definition of momentum in words. So we need to define momentum. And remember from our previous video, we said momentum is the product of mass and velocity. So that's the product of mass and velocity. That's our moment momentum. And then now let's move on to the next question, which says uh, the net force acting on object A is zero between times 10 seconds and T 20 seconds. And then now it goes on and says, use the graph and relevant equation to explain why this statement is true. So we need to explain why uh, the net force between these two times is positive. Between 10 seconds and 20 seconds, it's, it's, uh, it's zero. So we need to explain that. And remember, net force is given by the change in momentum divided by the change in time. And as you can see, our change in momentum is zero between these two points. That's because there's no change in momentum. We just have a straight line there between the two points. Uh, and also, you can just tell by looking at the gradient of this line. The gradient of this line is zero. That means now our change in momentum is zero. And now from this equation, we're going to get zero for the change in momentum divided by the change in time. And now the change in time, that's going to be 20 seconds minus 10 seconds. 20 minus 10. We're going to get zero divided by 10. And you know that any number... Or zero divided by any number that's zero and it means that our net force is equals to zero between these two times the between 10 seconds and 20 seconds so now we've answered that one and we just uh, proved that that's indeed true now let's move on to the third question it says that calculate the moment and the magnitude of the impulse that object a experiences between t 20 seconds and 50 seconds so we need to get the impulse between 20 seconds and then 50 seconds so now for us to get the impulse we need to go back and look at our our definition of definition of impulse which says that impulse is equals to the net force multiplied by the change in time and then now firstly we need to look at the change or the net force between these two points that's the net force equals to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. And then now, this is just the change in uh, momentum is just our gradient between these two points. That's going to be y2, which is at that point, and then minus y1, which is at that point. So the difference there is minus 120, which is y2 at that point, at the final point, minus y1. Oh, sorry, this point is a bit misplaced. Let me just put it there. Yeah, that's our 50 there at the point where uh, there's no there's no change in momentum so now it's going to be minus 120 minus 50 and then divided by the change in time the change in time 50 seconds minus 20 seconds 50 minus 20 seconds and then now we're gonna get minus 120 minus uh minus 50 well that's minus 170 divided by 50 minus 20 that's 30 and then now our final answer will be minus 70 divided by 30 and that's minus 5.67 newtons that's our net force between the two uh, the two points there and now we're going to go back to our equation of impulse which says impulse equals to the net force multiplied by the change in time and then the net force is minus 5.67 newtons Multiplied by the change in time, it's just the difference between 50 seconds and 20 seconds, and that's 30 seconds. That's our change in time. 
So now we're gonna get minus 5.67 multiplied by 30 seconds. Okay, let me just put it nicely there. 30 seconds, that's minus 170 uh, Newton second. Remember to always put in your, your SI units. That's very important. <clears throat> now moving on to the last question for this, uh, for this particular problem. It says that at T50, which is at the point there, object A collides with object B, which is a momentum of 70 kilograms meter per second in the east direction, you understand? And now they're saying use the information from the graph, from this graph and the relevant principle to calculate the momentum of object B after the collision. Uh, so now for this problem, we need to use the law of linear conservation of momentum. Linear conservation of momentum. Uh, it says that the momentum <clears throat> uh, in an isolated system is conserved, like it doesn't change before and after collision. So you need to always remember that for you to be able to apply this, for you to be able to apply this, uh, this law. So we're gonna have change in momentum for object A it has to be equal to the change in momentum for object B, but in the opposite direction, you understand? Because this, these objects are moving in opposite direction. That's why they're gonna collide at the end of the day. Uh, for the object A, the change in momentum will be that's the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So it's minus 150 minus uh, minus 50. That's the initial momentum. And then for object B, will be momentum before collision minus final mom which minus 70, <coughs> which is the momentum uh, before collision. And then on the left hand side, we're going to get minus 120, minus 50, minus 120, minus, sorry, minus, one, minus 50. That's minus 170 on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll be having minus momentum of, of object B after collision plus 70. That's the momentum before collision. And now we need to solve for momentum after collision. That's simple arithmetic there. So it's going to be minus 170 minus oh flip i know i made a mistake there uh, yeah well i made a slight mistake uh for this one here let me just try to correct that quickly so now change in momentum for object a equals to minus change in momentum for object b so now for object a we're gonna have 50 minus 120 so that's the 50 there and then the 120 uh, right there at the bottom minus minus into object B's final momentum minus initial momentum or the momentum before collision and now the difference between these two uh, we're gonna get oh it's minus into minus 120 sorry minus 120 there again so it's gonna be 50 plus 120 that's equals to minus momentum of B after collision plus 70 and then right now we just need to solve for momentum of B final and then we're gonna get that's 50 plus 120 equals to 170 170 on, on that side minus 70 and then the final answer will be equals to minus 100 kilograms meter per second and now we need to use this sign here to determine the direction for this momentum so it's gonna be momentum final equals to 100 kilogram meter per second in the west direction because remember now initially when we started this question we said we're going to take east or any movement towards the east direction to be positive and any motion towards the west uh, direction is going to be negative so now this negative here shows that this object is going to be moving in the in the opposite direction or in the west direction so now let's move on to the second second question or the second example that i'm going to be dealing with now uh, that's going to come from November 2014, final exam for 2014. So now, okay, let me just write it down here. Right, dealing with physics, you need to remember that. And now this question says that, let me, sorry, back for you. Dancers have to learn many skills, including how to land correctly. A dancer of mass 50 kilograms, let me just write the given information here before we tackle this question. Given information, so we're given a mass 
of 50. This is our densest mass, 50 kilograms. Uh, and now this tensor leaps into the air and lands feet first on the ground. She lands on the ground with a velocity of 5 meters per second. And her velocity as she lands is 5 meters per second. And now it goes on to say, as she lands, she bends her knees and comes to a complete stop in 0 0.2 seconds. That means our change in time, our time is 0 0.2 seconds. So now the first question says, calculate the momentum with which the dancer reaches the ground. So we need to determine the momentum with which our dancer uh, reaches the ground. And remember our momentum is just a product of mass and velocity. And in this case, we're given the mass and we're given the velocity. So we just need to plug in and play. Uh, the mass, 50 kilograms, multiplied by the velocity, which is 5 meters per second. Oh, and also another thing before I forget. Let's take downwards motion to be, to be positive. So anything in the downward direction is going to be considered to be positive. And anything in the upward uh, direction will be negative. So now because our denser is landing uh, downwards, that means this momentum now that we're going to get here will be positive since our downward motion is taken to be positive. So we're going to have 50 multiplied by 5. And that's 250 kilograms meter per second uh, downwards. We need to just put the direction there because remember, momentum is a vector quantity. So now we're done with the first one. And also remember to put in the SI, I mean the SI units, very important. And then the second question says, define the term impulse of a force. You know, so we need to define impulse. So we dealt with this in the previous question. Impulse is just the product of net force and the change in time. Product of net force and change in time. And then moving on now to the third question. It says, calculate the magnitude of the net force acting on the dancer as she lands. So we need to find the F net. And then the same question goes on to say, assume the dancer performs the same jump. Oh no, this is the next question. Oh, let's start with this one first, and then we're gonna continue with, the, with that one in the, next, uh, in the next question. So it says calculate the magnitude of the net force acting on the dancer as she lands. So we need to find F net as I said. So now the F net is just equals to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. You understand? So that's our our net force. And then now in this case, we're just gonna have our momentum, which is 250, divided by the change in time, which is the time it should take to land. That's 0 0.2 seconds. So now we're gonna get a net force of 250 divided by 0 0.2 uh, seconds. The net force will be 1,250 newtons. It's also downwards because we're taking downwards direction to be positive. And then now moving on, they're saying, assume that the dancer performs the same jump as before, but she lands without bending her knees. So we need to assume she's doing the same jump as before, but this time she's landing without bending her knees. So that means she's saving some time uh, and she's taking a shorter time to land. So now the question says, will the force now be greater than, smaller than, or equal to the force calculated in 4.3? So we need to determine if the net force will be greater than, uh, if it will increase, decrease, or stay the same. That's what we need to determine now, given the, the condition there. So now as you know that net force is directly proportional to the change in momentum and the same net force is inversely proportional to the change in time so that means now if you decrease your time as we're doing in this case if you decrease the time the net force is going to increase you understand because it's an inverse proportionality so now to answer the question our net force will increase because f net is inversely proportional to the change in time so we expect the net force to increase because we're going to reduce the time that the dancer is going to take for her to land. And then now moving on to the last question there. Oh, no, we just give, have to give a reason for this answer. The same, give a reason for the answer in question 4.4. And they've already done that. And that means now we're done with this question.
The reason is F net is, is inversely proportional to the change in time. You need to remember that it's very important. Hey guys, that's all for this lesson. Join me in the next lesson. And also thank you guys for, for, for joining me in this lesson. Always remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please do also like there. And yeah, comment. Thank you.